In this video, we're going to discuss creating and editing groups in SIM. So groups is in a little bit of a transitional period at the moment. It's kind of broken up between the new HTML5 interface and the old Flash interface. Certain groups are only available in each location. Um, that will, of course, move completely over HTML5 in time. But in this video, we're going to be using both interfaces to have a look at all the groups. Let's start off with HTML5. So the first group we're looking at is probably the most important for most of us is the email templates. Now this is highly useful in many of your rules. Most, a lot of your rules are going to be using send email alerts and all of those need to have an appropriate template associated with it. Okay, So um, here I can look at the default list of templates here and decide if I want to make an adjustment or simply add my own. Let's, uh, let's actually do an adjustment to this default template here. This is the most common, but it's a little sparse. If you look at the details, we see we have the template name, we have the subject line, and then we have the message data, so what shows up in the body of the email. And there's really not much going on here. We have the event info at this detection time. So we can spice this up a little bit and potentially more uh, details from the source event. So these uh, background highlighted text here, this event info and detection time, these are actually what are called parameters, this little button right here. And parameters are designed to essentially be little variables that, that uh, populate with data when this message gets filled and sent. So when the rule fires, it's going to pull event info and detection time out of the source event that triggered the rule and incorporate that detail into this message body for you. So I may want to add on this a little bit. This isn't a lot of info. Let's, let's try adding some more stuff here, such as maybe the source account that triggered this action. Add the text, and then I can click on this add parameter button or just hit the dollar sign it'll open up the parameter box for me and I just give it a name. Now the name you give it doesn't have to match the field name exactly. You can really call it whatever you want as long as you know what it is. This is just me being me, but uh, feel free to change it however you want to. And maybe we'll want to know which rule sent off this message. So I could say rule fired. We'll just call this one rule. Okay, so now we have a couple of new parameters to play with. I can add other what is whatever static text I want here, adjust it, and uh, make it look however I want to. When I'm done, I can just save it, and I have a modified template that I can start using my rules. Okay. Now, be advised whenever you add new uh, new parameters like that to an existing template, if you are using any rules that are currently employing that template, you're going to have to go back to that rule and edit the rule and adjust the action to populate. Um, those new parameters that you just added, just as a forewarning. Okay, but that's really all you need to know about templates. It's very easy and straightforward. The only other thing worth mentioning here is in the Flash interface, it is possible to clone these templates and then edit the clone. You'll notice here we don't yet have the ability to um, clone and edit here. So we can just do the edit. So if you do want to, if you'd rather clone these before you start editing them, so you always have the defaults to work with. That's always recommended as far as we're concerned. So you may want to start out here and clone it from here and come back here and just start your editing at that point. Moving on to UDGs, also known as user defined groups. These are just static lists of whatever you need a static list for. So this could be stuff like server names or IP addresses, process names, service names, account names, okay, um, range of ranges of IP addresses, all sorts of things, okay. We have, we have lots of these built in. You can scroll down and see the list here. And most of them are very useful. Some of these need to, pop, need to be populated with your own data. For example, we don't know what your approved DNS service will be or what your admin accounts will be, probably. Okay, But on the other hand, we have certain ones like uh, SQL injection vectors or worm accounts. Things, these are actually populated by a security team here. And these are these are accurate to use in security situations. So you can simply employ these in your rules or your filters or what have you, and um, and be done with it. But some of this stuff obviously needs to be populated with your data. They're probably just going to be coming blank. So one I'd like to point out specifically is this authorized USB devices because it's very useful when you're using USB Defender and rules, which was which we'll discuss further in the USB Defender video. But let's just have a look at this uh, this user defined group here. I'm going to edit this, and we'll see a list of drives, essentially. This is my whitelist for USB Defender, so these are authorized drives. Now, I can, I can delete any of these, edit any of these, or simply add new ones to the list by clicking on Add Element. 
such as my new drive with its value. I can give it a description if I wanted to. Okay, and I can simply continue adding elements like that going forward, as many as I want to. But if I have a lot of things to add, it could be a little cumbersome or it could take quite a long time to add a very large list to this. Or conversely, if I wanted to edit a bunch of these, it could take a while. But we do have a couple of options for that. So we have, we have this import and export option. Now I could import elements straight from a brand new list to a completely blank, blank UDG. That's fine. But I can also use this function to quickly edit a, a large number of these entries. So if I do an export elements and just pull up this CSV file, I can essentially play with this in Excel, make it however I want to, and then go on from there. So let's say I have a couple more Cruiser drives to add. We want to be sure to give them unique name values. Okay. Um, if we were to try and save this with all the same Cruiser M3 value for the name, it's not, it's going to try and put them into one cell. So it's not going to work very well. Okay. Um, you want to be sure the, the value or sorry, the name uh, input here is always going to be a unique value. The value that can be the same. It doesn't really matter, but uh, this is the unique identifier here. So we could just say, we could just clone this value if I wanted to like so. Give it a description. Okay. Drive. All right, and once we're done with that, we can just save this file, keep in the, the CSV format. And then we can do import elements and import those elements back in. So you see we have a couple of new cruiser drives. I could have adjusted these uh, values for any of these other ones and it would have updated the existing entry as well. So the import isn't really a, isn't really a delete everything that was there and import this new list. It's more of a merge type of thing. So it, it merges your new data with your existing data. Um, so what that means is if I were to adjust this value, it would overwrite this existing entry with a new value. If I have a brand new line full of entries, it would simply add it to the list. Um, but essentially it is it is an import and merge type of function. So as we get everything the way we need it, we can simply go to next, make adjust the name as necessary and save what we wanted to. I'm not actually going to save that right now, but um, that's essentially it for, for um, editing a UDG. Building a new one is exactly the same thing, just with a blank slate. You get the process there. And those are the two groups that we can manage in this interface currently. But if we go to the old flash interface, which you can access via this sim console button and go to build and then groups. We see we have the full list of different group types here. If I look under types, we see we also, we have the uh, email template and UDGs as well as a couple of others. Event groups, direct to service group, time of day set, also known as time group in the new interface, and then connector profiles, which will be covered in a separate video. Let's look at event group. Now event groups are literally just event groups, right? They are groups of similar events that you can use. You can run one condition or one query on versus adding individual events for something. So if I wanted to add or build an in-depth or an events query about to search the database for all of my uh, log on different types of events or authentication events or network attack events, network audit events, etc., they're all in one group and it makes it much easier than adding those individual events separately. So if I need to adjust any of these and add or remove individual events, it's very straightforward. So for example, if I can edit this one here, if I go to the list view, which is much easier to view than the, uh, the other option, I think, but I can scroll down, see which entries or which individual events are selected for this one. Okay. And I could, I could adjust that. I could, maybe I don't want to, cover reboots or software installs. I could simply modify that and save it. And that's really all there is to it, okay? Building one from scratch is just as simple. Moving on from event groups, we have directory service groups. Now these are very useful in queries because they are 
They function like UDGs, the user-defined groups that we just dealt with, but um, they're automatically updated and they're automatically synced with your Active Directory. So assuming you have properly configured the Directory Service Query Connector and you have access to your Active Directory, you can sync up any of the security groups in your AD to sync up with them and just use that in your queries or your rules. Okay, So for example, if I were to add a new Directory Service Group, Assuming your connector is working properly, that should not pop up. But um, you should see this uh, this list of your Active Directory uh, infrastructure on the bottom left corner. Okay, You'll see your domain at the top. You'll see your folders here. And I can maybe go to the Users folder and see all these different security groups that I could potentially add here. So for example, maybe I want to also add you know, just a list of domain users. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have that for a reason for that. I could save that. It's going to add a new entry for every box I check. And if I have a look there, this will give me an essentially near real-time list of this particular group. So these are updated very frequently. The interval is about every five minutes or so. So these are essentially all real-time or very near real-time which is much easier to manage than, you know, an individual UDG where you have to go update that when personnel changes happen, right? So I always have an accurate list of my domain admins. Next one is the time of day set, AKA time groups. These can be very useful to use in rules. If you want to limit the rule to only fire for a specific window of time, such as inside or outside of business hours. Okay, I can easily do that with my rules. But if I want to adjust the time frame for any of these, which are all built in, you can of course add your own. I simply edit it from this screen and choose, maybe I want to include the lunch hour. So each of these checkboxes is a 30 minute block of time. Check or uncheck as needed. Save it when you're done. No other action is necessary. All right. Um, and that is it. The only other one is going to be connector profile, and that will be covered in a separate video because there's quite a bit going on with that. So that essentially concludes this lesson. Thanks for your attention. We'll see you next time.